Did it settle all right? Yeah. Okay. See you a bit later. Good morning, Janice. Janice B. Allison, have you seen her? Janice? Janice? It's called a pass. Are you coming down to work group? Speak to me. Got 15 minutes, okay? So we can we can probably do get the order and things done if you're down in five minutes. But otherwise, we're going to be left with a mess again. I'm going to go down. All right. Yeah, this is Janice's job, but she's not here this morning, and someone's been up to try and find out what's happening and whether she's coming down or not, but she's she's refusing to speak to anyone and I'm not prepared to go up and speak to her this morning as if she was abusive to me yesterday morning, so I'm just going to put the slot in the fridge now and there won't be any milk for children's teas or for the surgery. And then we'll have to see what happens. Um, see how people respond to that. What are we going to do about Janice? Nothing. Does anyone know why she's in bed? I feel that Janice has, you know, it's been done before, the plan didn't work, and I feel that something's got to change. Well, actually, I mean, I haven't found Janice really supportive to me yesterday. I feel quite inclined I know, but she to... told me that she doesn't like people coming up. She tells me that every time. Yeah, I think I might be able to say something, at least to make her feel better. She made me feel a bit better the other day when I was in bed, even though know, I didn't get up. Mm. You should go upstairs if you feel like that, then. But, I mean, should we carry on the meeting? That's what I want to say. Otherwise, we're never going to get anything done. Yeah, I think she can. Mm, yeah. Mick, if you want to go up... Yeah, I won't be long. I, be I, I mean, I would be sorry if you were missing from the meeting for very long. I won't, I won't. Um, Nick, try and see. Nick, we should see. I can't say long. It asked me just to be quick. I was finding everything particularly bad. Mm. You don't want to talk, no? Mm. Um, if you can come down, we we'll try. Mm. Yeah, okay then. Hey, um, Lynn, I can see you sitting over there very upset. Maybe you, if you can, try and tell us what you're upset about. Go on, sit. I mean, do other people know? I just feel, feel really a lot. And, well, at least I, I don't know. It's just... It's very difficult trying to talk. I mean, it, it feels important for people to try and understand what's going on, why you're feeling like this, but I don't know if we need to come back to it and give you some time to sort of compose yourself or something. Yes, I'd like to ask them what she would like us to do about the meeting in the meantime. I'd like to leave if I can, please. I mean, can we go on or should yeah, we wait for on. you? No, go on. <clears throat> I'd like to leave if I Please, I'd like to leave. <laughs> can you say anything, Janice, about why this morning was difficult to get up again. I don't know, I didn't sleep very well. I wonder why I was having bad dreams. And I just woke up depressed this morning, I didn't want to get up. It had nothing to do with the pantry, because I spent 45 minutes last night planning it and ha having help with Margaret to do it, so... I had everything planned to do this morning. So was the milk ordered for the weekend then, or not? Well, I wasn't up, so it wasn't. 
my feeling as the person who's working with you in the pantry this week is if you had come to me and said that I'm really feeling very depressed and finding it difficult to cope this morning, then I could have talked to you about it. Couldn't you do that, Janice, instead of just, you know, staying in bed and not telling people? Obviously I couldn't, because I didn't. Do you think there's a way, Janice, that maybe, um, is there any way you know that you could be helped? Mm. But surely I'm confused because I thought being here was about being able, one, to, to understand your feelings. <clears throat> Hopefully your therapy can help you to do that. But when you do have feelings that can be destructive to your life, like your depression seems to be destructive to your relationships, then it's about learning how to, to manage the feelings differently. I mean, is it something you could work on doing, is to actually come and tell us? No, no, I just think we're wasting time. I think there's a lot on the agenda and you spend God knows how much time with me. I think we should just move on. Janice, what's happening with you is important because, because of what's happening with you, nobody's got any milk and bread. Yeah, I think we should just move on. Where are you intending to go, Len? Just far away from me as possible. Well, it might help if you think about who specifically you are angry with and, and try and talk about I'm that. not really angry with anybody in here. It's well, myself and the way I feel. And I think you're angry that people gave you some feedback yesterday that you didn't like and was painful to hear. I mean, I know you're angry with Janet. Well, yeah, I am, because you fucking... Oh! <laughs> She quits herself. I spent so much time, five days, and Lisa went down to her last night, and I couldn't get support. I'll tell Lynn to come down if she wants support. I'm not asking for it back. I'm not asking for it back at all. Oh, I'm not. And again, Lynn, you know, you get away from feeling sad or upset. You get angry, or you get in a, into a state where you can't think about how you feel. I said to Nancy last night I felt sad and depressed, but I don't know what I feel. I'm so confused at what is inside, and I'm really frightened. I mean, this is, this is what, you know, we're trying to work with you on, about finding middle ground, that you don't have to pack your bags to go, you don't have to have a huge outburst or explosion. You know, it's about talking to people and saying how you feel. And if people give you feedback, yeah, it hurts and it's painful, but it, it's useful as well. You need to hear it. No, I think you might more usefully go and dig the garden or do something mm. like that to get rid of some of your anger. Oh. I'll just sit and have a chat or something. Well, come downstairs and do that, yeah. Just the weekend your mother said she'd rather you did stay somewhere else. It's obvious I don't really want to talk about it at the moment. You know, do it, Janice. That's because usually there's nothing to talk about. Well, is there something to talk about this time? No, there isn't. Well, it can't feel nice knowing that your mum doesn't want you to stay. Yeah, so there must be feelings there about that. I'd, I'd assume hurt and anger and those sort of feelings. <coughs> you, say, you say there isn't nothing, nothing to talk about. Well, I don't have any feelings anyway. I just go home and I, I just use my mum anyway. I just use everybody. This seems to be a, a reaction of yours. You run yourself down straight away. You say you're using people and all this sort of thing. Well, when I get it said to me, it's going to be true, isn't it? Well, who has said it to you? It doesn't <clears> matter. <throat> I told you, I don't want to talk but about it. But it does matter. Well, I'm not going to talk well, about it. Well, obviously, it has upset you. Well, I'm not going to talk about it. I wonder if this is how you are when often you stay in bed and don't get up. And in fact, you've made quite an effort in, in getting up and going to your work group this morning. <laughs> you're joking. I don't know what happened then with Caroline. What can you say? 
Okay, I'll just don't even want to stay in this room. Why is it so difficult to talk in Because you know talking doesn't get in your way anyway, that's why. This place, this place is all about talking jokes, isn't it? Yes, but I've been here for seven months and it hasn't got me anywhere. I think I'm just one of the failures of this hospital. I think treatment works for 98% of people in this place, but not for the 2%, which is me. Because I haven't changed. Because I think you, I mean, you obviously need to go to hospital. I don't know how many tablets you've taken, but. No, no, no. Well, hmm? I think we're worried about you and we have called an ambulance. Oh, what, 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 what symptoms have I shown that you Well, you're extremely drowsy. I'm depressed as well. It's... I don't think I'm that bad if you let me go to sleep. I want you to believe that I haven't had many tablets. Mm. You drank some alcohol last night, didn't you? Yeah. 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 Yeah
telling me was that she left me with a tag on my coat and left me, I think it was outside my aunt's door. You're all right. to sleep through most of the night. It's five o'clock now. Yeah? I actually need to get something to just clean my face. Have you got any um, towels? Do we need towels there a minute? OK. And just wipe your... Wipe your forehead. Oh, does that hurt? Sorry. Sorry. Do you want to? No, I don't. It's all right. It's just, a, it's just a wet cloth. Yeah? Just because you're bleeding there, I don't want to. And stretch yourself there. It's, it's later than usual, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's usually about. Right. Always does seem to be the same kind of time, though, between three and five. Mm. You're quite safe here. OK, nothing's going to hurt you. Mm. I feel trapped. I feel trapped. Mm. You're quite safe here. Are you fully awake now, Lynn? Okay. You can go back to bed. Yeah. Come How distressed you do feel about Lynn's nights because I don't know how much people do feed back to Lynn about what it's like actually to be there when she's disturbed at night. The only way I can describe it really is like seeing her behind a pane of glass and not being able to actually reach her um, or be able to do anything to help her. But the thing about the nights is I think that's the only time you actually have physical contact with people because nurses are having to physically restrain you and hold your hands 
and yet you jump visibly when anybody walks or approaches near you during the day, which feels a bit extreme. But I don't know if you ever let anybody touch you during the day. Yeah, I have done, but I don't like people walking up behind me. I never have to. You've been here coming up for six months and still, night after night after night, people have been got up. And I said to you at breakfast this morning, I'm despairing about your nights. I don't know what's going to change, but I don't know whether you are. I am. So what are you going to do about it? I don't know. I have been talking more, and they seem to be worse this week, and it could be because I have been talking about things more. C can I say something, Lynn, in the hope that you, you won't take off? But I think it might be very painful for you to hear, and it's, it's not easy to say. Do you want to risk it? Yeah. Yeah? I was thinking what, what people have been saying about how, during the nightmares, it feels like, well, it is so abusive. You're so abusive to yourself, pulling at yourself, at your skin, making yourself bleed. It must be horrible for you, and it's certainly horrible to watch. But I'm trying to make sense of the other side, where people feel that it's at those times they can get closest to you, can possibly touch you, hold your hand, comfort you. And I wonder if at all it's linked with what your experience may have been when you were being abused you know, by your, by your stepbrothers. That, on one hand, it may have been really, really awful, horrible, real abuse, but there might have been an element, too, of some sort of touching, caring, some sort of closeness that you didn't have elsewhere in your life. And that might make it very complicated and very difficult. But I'm struck by, you know, the sort of image as well of you as a young child being left on a doorstep by your mother, just left there. You might really be somebody who, who so much wants that closeness, caring, touching to be held. What, the gardening? Um, you can certainly work a lot of anger out with it, I think, yeah. <laughs> but there does seem to be a, a pattern, Lynn, of you putting yourself through quite a lot being quite destructive towards yourself. And maybe, I don't know if it's possible to think of that as a protection in some way for other people. You're the one that has to suffer, like not telling about the abuse. I feel that's all I deserve. And it's, as much as she's all saying here to trust people, I can't handle it. It's, all this caring is just too much. It's just... It's really frightening. I'm not saying that my parents didn't care for me, but... All these people wanting to get so near me, and yet... And I feel that's all I deserve through life, that I must have done something wrong for things that have gone on for years. Well, that you must have done something wrong yeah. to cause your mother to leave you on a doorstep. Yeah. With, and to cause your stepbrothers to sexually abuse you. You seem to be holding on to so much even at the moment. Your legs are shaking, feeling tense. Sitting here with you, it, it feels tense to me too. As if you're having to hold on to something that's unbearable. 
It is. I just feel life is actually unbearable at the moment. But it's, it is a horrible dilemma to be in, to have such strong, intense feelings, try to hold on to them inside, to protect people that you care for. And yet, people that you may also feel, at times, hateful towards as well. How can you be hateful towards people who have been through so much? I can't comprehend the two. I really can't. Get it together. Why I should hate them? You took some drugs, or oh, was it tranquilizers? Oh, I don't know what that was. You know what the feedback was from that either. So maybe you can mm. talk a bit. I think I took. I think I took more tablets while I, once I was stunned. <clears throat> That's why I said it was such a bad effect. I, I didn't intend to overdose. Which is no excuse, but I didn't, didn't. I didn't intend to overdose, although I was thinking about it. I was thinking about overdosing, but that wasn't the intention. The intention was... I was in bed all Sunday, just laying there, going mad, basically. And I got up about four when I realised it was too late for me to come back. And I wanted to come back. And so I thought, how am I going to get through the night? And I just knew I had to take drugs and alcohol to get through Sunday night to Monday morning. I think I have some ideas <clears throat> about why things went very wrong this weekend, but I don't know if other people do or if you've said. I, was, I don't think, I don't know. Um, I, I've been to my mother's grave, which I haven't done since she died, which is 18 years ago. I don't know why I went. And I was, it, I was standing there and it felt... I was just so clinical about it, I looked down at the ground and just saw her as a skeleton six feet down. And so I just walked away. I can tell you about me, Mum, but I haven't told you, really. Um, she had a mental problems and emotional problems all her life. She, used to try, she tried to kill herself from 15 years old. She died, she did it at 41, and I was 14 years old. She did it in our house during the night, and I was the, I was the oldest one apart from my dad who was in a wreck. I, was, I, I had to go in and make sure she was dead and things like that. And she died with her eyes open, and she'd been crying. That's exactly how she looked. And I just went in there and stood there looking at her, and, Something shut down. Um, I, I used to call myself a robot because that's how it felt like, which is why I have troubles with emotions. It's so it, that's what it is easy for me to kill myself because of those reasons. It is really easy. There are reasons why I don't do it, I suppose. But I could I could shoot myself now in front of all of you, and it wouldn't be no problem for me. That's how clinical I am about it. Death, life doesn't mean anything. Death is the only thing that means something. Even if it's just meaning being with mum, I don't know. But I've never been loved like, like some people have, maybe not many people in this room. But I've never been loved by parents. I mean, presumably you're here because, you know, what other that's people right. think. You're here because years. you want to try and... I, yeah, that's right. I have out. been trying for years and I've seen this as my last chance. And then there'll be trouble for me afterwards if I fail or if I feel I fail. If I can't open up doors that are inside me, which must be there. What are you up to, Janice? Having a bit of peace and quiet, I thought. Where have you been? Going to get some more cigarettes. Weren't you supposed to be in a meeting? Not a joke, Bob, so don't make me laugh. I think it is very difficult to leave when you haven't got a therapist to help you leave, because I think it's actually one of the most important things that, that you do here, sort of managing to leave and understand the feelings that that brings yeah. up. And, and to do that without the help of a therapist is, mm. in a way, it's extra difficult. But I'm worried about you been able to, to manage to say well, goodbye. Well, yeah, that's something which really worries me. I mean, having to touch people. Mm. And I feel a bit stupid making, making some kind of announcement in community saying, um, please don't touch me when I say goodbye, when you say goodbye to me. I mean, um, I'm sure that's all part of homing. 
misunderstood and uncared for by my mother. But you see, one of the reasons I, I make sure I don't have relationships is that I never have to say goodbye. You're more sociable than you used to be. You always used to isolate yourself. But I still do. Yeah, but not as much as you used to. No, not as much as I used to. No. Sometimes it used to be quite difficult being with you because with the things that you came out with, you know, people were worried that you were going to insult us or make a joke out of us. You know, you're more sensitive now, more caring towards other people. Have you got a final joke for us, Anna? <laughs> final joke? Final joke? <laughs> Are there any jokes at the castle? <laughs> oh, God, oh, she's following me. <laughs> you don't want me to do Oh god, this is embarrassing. Anna, just tell me. <laughs> did you used to do these things in your session? No, 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 no. I sat absolutely, absolutely rigidly still in my sessions. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. The very best of luck. Thank you, we'll need it. <laughs> I was going to actually, I have to say that I'd like to. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. Take care. Yeah. Janice, uh, way wide about you, and uh, I'm not quite sure uh, the whole story, but I understand that you were feeling suicidal feelings earlier on today, and at tea time you handed over some tablets which you had um, kept for some time, and uh, you'd be on supper team tonight, so I don't know whether that's been a help or an extra burden. But um, you've been very cut off today, and I just want to, you know, if you can say something, because I'm, I'm not sure what it is about. My well, supper team helped me cut off a bit more. I mean, those feelings you felt early on, are they still around? I have no intentions of killing myself. I just have destructive thoughts. Mm -hmm. If I'm a concern yeah. tonight, I'm going to be a concern for weeks, because these feelings go on for a long time. But presumably you wanted us to, to know how bad you were feeling, Janice, because you actually handed the tablets in today. Yeah, 
because I'm frightened. Because I have to get up at three, cool. so I don't have a bad night. I get up for half an hour to break the night, so that then I don't wake anybody else up. Karen's my contact tonight. You're gonna get him up? Well, I probably will, because I've not slept right for the last two nights. Well, I've got Joe up last night, didn't I? Sneakily <laughs> 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 trying to pull my tights out here. What's in my dog? This is my dog. Kate, Kate, come and sit beside me, yeah. Right, OK. This is... Oh, no, don't bring that ugly thing. It's not ugly. Oh, this, this one, one, yeah, but not that one. No, this is my favourite one. Hello. 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 Same in shoes, so why aren't you in bed? Because I watch this every week. But I, I think your treatment is more important. I don't yeah. think that this has affected my treatment any adversely to anything else. Oh, well, I, well, I think it is because it's very hard to work with you when you won't cooperate with community issues, of which bedtime is one. The fact that I do want to watch it is obviously causing problems. And if it is for the whole community, for the benefit of the whole community to be in bed at 12 o'clock, then I shouldn't even be allowed to negotiate staying any later. I'm very interested how you take the conversation away from your distress and vulnerability, which is what yeah. I was trying to get out. I do. But I also did that by cooking today. By covering up my feelings, by not getting upset, by coping with cooking, I could not think about how I was feeling. So why shouldn't I do it by watching a programme? Something else that I do actually enjoy watching. Rather than cooking, rather than cooking to cover up problems and absolutely hating it. The, the, the culture of being here is actually carrying on doing practical things when you are distressed, and that's part of being a cooking team. I'll say if I do understand what you're saying, and I will take it into consideration, but for today, I'm going to be watching the rest of this programme. Yeah, well, you've got, what, what precisely? 15 minutes to do all that, and it'd be a waste of time. Oh, I'm I think it's important because we've set a community oh, bedtime. Sorry, you're not well, able to keep to that, so I think it's important. Well, you're responsible to do that. I'm sure yeah, any responsibility for that. Through that. I totally refuse to take responsibility for that. Who are you? You're not taking responsibility. No, I think you're wrong. Only yesterday she was complaining about not having any money. She tried to rob a jewellery store. At this stage, there's nothing you can do for her. She's on her own. So I think I'll go and get the community chair people and John up. I thought sure they'd come to the So we'll pub. come back down again. I mean, okay. it's our own club, isn't it? Well, I've been asking for money to send you overseas for some important track of it. I don't have any trouble. Trouble with money on this is a different kettle of fish. You must have high hopes for Michelle if you go to all that trouble. The highest. Oh, dear. Then we mustn't stand in your way. I'm going to have a cigarette if you want to talk to me. <coughs> I'm sorry to get the rest of the chair people up. I think that is just totally out of order. Because well, I don't think it, it is out of order. It defeats the object. It defeats no, the issue. I don't issue think it does. We and set, just makes it into a big issue of getting community chair people up to make them angry with me as well. Time, Janice, which you're having great difficulty sticking to. So, perhaps you could give us an assurance of what time you are here. It's not me that got you up, it was Fripper. Well, I got you up because you weren't able to stick to the bedtime, Janice. Funny how things can just change to suit you, isn't it? How I have, I've already said to you, I have spent four weeks having told staff that I'll be going to bed at 20 to 1, and it has been accepted. But as you've pointed out, in the last couple of weeks, we've been trying to set a bedtime, as I say, to try and contain the disturbance that there's been in the community over the nights. I'm sitting and watching Prison Cell Block 
was actually at the time not creating a disturbance. disturbance. Well, I think it was. Well, it is now, for fuck's sake. I mean, you have just got the community chair people up, well, which is defeating the object of why it's happened in the first place. Well, why is it defeating the object? Because it's making them angry with me. They want to go to bed and sleep. And because of me, they're having to get up. So, presumably, you do care about the effect on the community? Of course I do. I don't like the fact that these people have got up. I'd appreciate it if you could leave me for two minutes to finish my cigarette on my own, and I'll be going to bed when I finish my cigarette. I don't think it's necessary to sit for the next five minutes talking to you for a fair. Because well, I said I'll go to bed. Right? Thanks, Margaret. Thanks, Jo. See you in the morning, Janice. Good night. Good night. I would like the last two minutes on my own. Janice, what do you want me to do? Are you coming down? No. So when will you be down? Because it's nearly quarter past. I don't know. What, five minutes? Mm. You'll be down in five minutes? Yes, yeah, I will. Okay. I'll get started. And I'd be interested to find out whether or not that was your bottle of skull in the firm room last night. We keep hearing, Jens, that you go to the pub every night. Oh, really? Patients seem to know that. Oh, well, I suppose I'll just have to put up with being punished, won't I? Well, can, can I, can I, I don't, I've actually don't know all the details and can you tell us a bit more about the tablets and why you had those and <coughs> what that was about? Perhaps if we start at the beginning it will make it I've had the sense. tablets for two weeks. With no intentions of hurting myself or taking them, therefore when I had headaches and I accidentally brought them back to the hospital and started leaving them at home. And then I was worried about the way I was feeling and I was having destructive thoughts, so I thought the best thing to do was to give the tablets in because if I start getting destructive, having thoughts is one thing, but suddenly cracking up and just doing something stupid on, on just like that is a different matter. So I gave the tablets in. There was no real concern yesterday. I just gave the tablets in because of what might happen in the next few weeks or few months. Can't you see that you would be a concern if you're actually saying that you've got suicidal thoughts? Well, then I'm concerned for another God knows how many months until something happens or until it stops. Well, then maybe you are a concern. But going out to the pub, if you actually are a concern, then going out to the pub and away from the hospital isn't actually helping you. The hospital isn't able to... It helped me a great deal last night to get out. Well, I'm not so sure about that. Well, it did. And you went off with Karen, which and is And everything's all... going to be all hunky-dory and marvellous if I stay in here, is it? Well, it's not necessarily going to be all hunky-dory and marvellous if you stay in here, but at least you're actually going to be able to talk with things within the hospital environment. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I'm probably just get punished again. <laughs> That's right, I think you've got a lot of problems at home on the weekends, and I think for all of us... Do you know what I think the fucking biggest problem is? Being here! That's not true, Janice, and you know it's not true. It is true. It isn't true. The it fucking well is. Don't contradict me when I'm telling you how I feel. Yeah, but it's... But, OK, you may feel like that, but it's not true. It is, because I feel it. You obviously had problems before you came here, so the problem can't be the hospital. There's something deeper than the hospital. You know, I can't stay in this room. Let's just try and think about it with you, Janice, if we can. I don't want to. Come on, please. No. Janice, don't walk out. Will you come and join me? Distance, 
I don't know. I mean, I heard that you left a session. What, what was happening? Yeah, I'm worried about how you're going to be. Lynn! I mean, I don't know, you know, I'm worried about how she's going to be tonight, really. Lynn had her individual session this afternoon, and she obviously came very close to talking about painful things in, in the past. Um, she wasn't able to stay in her session and continue talking about those, and she ran out of the building. Um, other patients actually tried to stop her and didn't succeed in doing that, and one of the nurses went after her, but she'd actually gone. She'd run off. But she has signed out in the signing out book, and she should be back at 4 o'clock. So I'll meet up with her at 4 o'clock at tea and, and talk with her about it. Um, but this is, is a pattern of Lynn's behaviour, that when things get very painful or uncomfortable, she actually runs away. And that's something that we're actually trying to, uh, to work with her on. OK. Thank you very much. I mean, your kind of hopelessness at the moment is, is something that you feel quite a lot of the time. It feels like quite, you know, quite a familiar feeling from you, Janice. But I thought this morning that, that you were actually very, very upset and that must have been quite frightening. What I think you need to try and do is, is think about why it felt so persecuting, why it felt so unbearable to, for people to want to find out more about what made you so upset. Well, I don't want to talk about what makes me so upset. I don't want to talk about anything, because half the time I don't know, I get confused. I don't want to say a word, because if I do, that is going to be when I could start losing control, and that's what I'm frightened of. Do you know what you'd be frightened of doing? Hello, Alf. It's Karen here. Hello. Um, I'm just phoning to let you know that um, well, we're a bit worried about Janice, who signed out from 5 to 7 to the pub and hasn't come back. Yes. The patient group on East have felt very worried about her. There's been two groups of people going out to, to look for her. We thought we'd just wait a bit longer. I mean, she's an hour after she should have been back. And. Uh, I planned that I would ring Marco about 10 o'clock and then we'd think about calling the police. <laughs> this is ridiculous. Janet, do, do you know where Lynn is at the moment? No, I don't know where she is. Sorry, I can't hear you. Would you? Thank you. Thanks for doing that. Right, I'll, um, Lisa and uh, Lisa and Janet are going to go and have a look, quick look, see um, where Lynn is. I mean, Maxie's meant to be the chairperson. She's just she, she's just disappeared. Yeah, so I don't know where she is. OK, I'll get Pam and we'll meet with um, Lynn then. <laughs> Lynn, where, where could we? Can we talk here? Or whenever. Whenever you want to talk. Sorry? Whenever you want to talk. Right. Um, I, I don't know what's happening today. I'm losing track of things all the time. It seems as if you went out the minute supper had finished, did you? Yeah. And you went straight to the pub. How much have you had since you've been in the pub? A double and a pint as well. A double and a pint. So that means you've had four doubles and a pint. Have you done anything else to yourself? Have you taken any tablets? No, have no, you cut I've yourself? Sick. You've been sick. Yeah. What are you worried about? Just the way I feel inside in the moment. <laughs> I'm so scared of all the feelings. <laughs> I was so frightened. I was trying to talk in session today and I really tried. But it was like me living it all again and I couldn't. Mm. <laughs> Nobody here is going to hurt you, Lynn. <laughs> I 
I don't want to go through another late night like last night mm. and then trying to talk about it today. <laughs> I think you need some time to calm down a bit, have your hot drink, and then we'll come back a bit later and think how you're going to manage the rest of the evening. Yeah? started talking to him and then um, I was just thinking you know just sod everything you know I didn't care the reason why I went out was because um, I'm supposed to have this meeting on Tuesday mm. your employees yeah and it just made me panic because I because the last time I went with them we went by taxi and I just couldn't cope with the fact that I had to go with them by transport Public transport. I don't know. <laughs> no. Did you buy any tablets or anything? No. Was that what you were thinking about doing? I wasn't thinking about getting tablets at all, but I do think about just giving up on life altogether. And that's what you were thinking this evening? Yeah. So how much did you have to drink? I only had about four pints. You're not going to go out again tonight, are you? No, I'm not going to go out. And you haven't got any tablets, because you, you have said to me that you feel like killing yourself, so I need to ask you these questions. No, I gave tablets on Tuesday. Yes. There's no intention of killing myself. That's just going to happen eventually. You're it's not going to happen now. Well, you're letting me know that that's what you feel like doing, but it sounds as if you're also able to to say that you feel like it, but you, that's not what you're going to do. Yeah, that's right. Well, so you are taking responsibility for yourself. Yeah, I'm also taking responsibility if, if in future I do want to kill myself. And I'm frightened that will happen. I'll be a dead person soon. Sorry, I'm not doing a very good job of chairing this meeting. I think a lot of people here were very worried about you last night, Janice, and, you know, wanting to call the police, wondering if you've actually done something to harm yourself. I know certainly Karen was very worried about that. And what about people here? How were people feeling when Janice was missing? People were feeling pissed off. I think it's very difficult to help Janice. I mean, I think that's it. I mean, Janice talks about feeling frustrated. I'm sure we are feeling frustrated as a group as well. Um, I'm sure other people should chip in and say how they feel, apart from me voicing opinions. But it's very difficult to help. It's very difficult to help you, Janice. Really. I don't want help, that's why. Part of me just wants to be out of this place for good and not ever come back. And I think it would be best for the rest of the patients if I was not here. And perhaps people who want help can get it. Well, it sounds like you're very angry inside and there's something that is sabotaging some of the things that you want inside you. But really, in a way, I'm not a therapist. Well, that's tough, because I don't want to ask for anything. I don't want anything. I want out of this place. But Janice, I mean, you're very defensive at the minute, and you come out, and I mean, I've heard you use, and these are your stock expressions, time and time again.
but there is other things in you. I've seen them as well. Well, I'd like you to know, and I'm going to say it for the last time, I have given up. So I'm not treatable here anymore. It doesn't even matter what I say. I don't mean half of what I say. I just cannot. Just work on yourselves. You know, just forget me, for God's sake. <clears throat> I think we should move on to someone else who needs help. And I just have this absolute self-hate at the moment. And I've been so awkward. I've taken up so much filming time. I've taken up so much firm time. And I'm not um, considering other people as much as I usually would. See, I think you're more comfortable saying to yourself that you're no good, everything's useless, you've spoiled everything. But I don't think you've given up hope. But I think, in a way, that's a problem. Because if you have hope of actually making things better, then it raises so many difficult issues, I think, for you. Yeah, OK, well, I am getting help. Since I've been here, maybe there are improvements that I have actually started to talk. But then it's what I can do with all of that. That's where the difficulty comes in. Talking's all well and good. So you quickly fall back into it. We acknowledge that you are getting... that some things have improved. The moment we acknowledge it, it's as if you quickly have to say, oh, yes, but I'm no good, I'm not using it, I'm not going to get anywhere. I feel I'm no good, Dr. Bell. I mean, I can turn around to you and say I'm feeling useless. And by your comments that you make back, it's like I want to be useless. Maybe I do, maybe it's safer. Please. Maybe I won't have to go through any more hassle. If I just think I'm useless and if I just think that I can't get anywhere, then things are not going to get as painful as um, I'm frightened they will if I do. If things do start really happening. I think that if you sense that any progress is being made, or we acknowledge it, that you feel in great danger, and that you feel driven to sabotage it, So it seems to me there has been some progress maybe made recently, but that things are getting very dangerous again. And you think that's because of the progress that might have been made? Well, what do you think? Well, I think on, on little things, like if you're thinking about progress, it's little things like when I go through stages of getting up in the morning and, um, you know, there's no comment about it and no sort of praise or anything. Maybe I shouldn't expect to be praised for something that I've done that I haven't done for a long time or whatever. But then, you know, there's all this hassle if I'm staying in bed and then when I'm getting up, everything seems like it's all OK. So maybe you think that if you make any progress, everyone starts thinking, well, that's all right. You just want to be forgotten about. She's better now. We don't have to worry about her. And that may feel very dangerous to you, because if we have that idea that we can just sort of turn away and think, oh, well, that's all right, she's on the road now, it would be completely forgetting your history. Can I just ask you before you go what your day's been like? I think that's an unfair question, actually, because <laughs> you know what my day's been like. I've been told to fuck off twice and I wondered why I came to work, basically. <laughs> I think you were there when it happened, weren't you? I, I need to go and wait in, actually. She's here. <laughs> Which is, um, it's just nine stone, really. So you have regained it. You've been binging over the weekend. 
Yeah. More chocolate and stuff. I'll just speak to you for a couple of minutes on my own. Very painful, isn't it? Yeah. And you know, what you've been through, I'm sure, perhaps I can't even conceive how painful, traumatic it's been for you. But what I, I can conceive about, and what I think to see, is how holding on to your hateful, angry, destructive feelings, holding on in a way that you're the one that suffers. But that makes it... That's all I deserve. I can't see it any other way. Mm. As if, as a child, you were responsible for what went on between your parents and you being abandoned. Or as a child responsible for what others older than you did to you, sexually abused you. How, how can you be responsible for that as a child? I just feel I've got to have done something wrong for it to lead into one thing after another. That's the way it's been all through my life. For 20 years, you know, it's just been one thing after the other. You know, I seem to get free and then something else happens. It's, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, I feel maybe I've just been put here for people to abuse or to walk all over her. But what's been happening here today with me? You've said a lot to me. I don't know what you're going to think afterwards. Can you guess? Can you imagine what you would think I would think? Just the thought that you hate me as well. Really? Yeah. And some of the things you say, it's very hard to get angry with you. Just, and yet I feel the anger there, I suppose. I suppose I am scared of, scared of you. You might even hate me. I mean, I say that because your image is that I might hate you. And hate is certainly around. You're feeling scared, scared of what I might do. Do you think there's any other possibility other than my hating you for what you've said? No, I just feel the more I talk, the more people will hate me. Do you think it's possible to hate someone? And still care about them? Yeah. So there are lots of things to be understood, an awful lot more. I think you've been very brave today, Lynn. 
it's felt really painful what you've been able to share. Do, do you feel able to, to finish? I don't really want to go. I don't know what to say, except Lynn, patients here take such risks, really push themselves to the, to the limit. If you had a wish, Lynn. Yeah. One wish. What would you wish for? Oh, I think when I leave here to go out and carry on with life. And I think to be with my husband. Being honest. If that's resolved before I leave. And so tell me, Janice, if you had a wish, one wish for yourself, what would you wish for? Can I have three? Can I have three? <laughs> nice big house with a nice car. That'd be one. Lots of money. That's Hang one. on a minute. Oh, and lots of money, yeah, right, that's one, OK. Um, to have everybody in the whole world to like me. To be a perfect person, that is. And, um, just to have a happier life. Can't think of anything else off the top of my head. And do you think at the end of your time here, any of those wishes will be nearer realisation? <laughs> Well, at the moment, they're very unrealistic, aren't they? I think I could work towards some of them to improve anyway. So are you hopeful? Mm. I'm always hopeful. That's why I stay here. Hope for that one miracle to happen. Mm. 